compromise, compromise, compromise. It's been a leading phrase in our narrative over the past few years. Obviously, compromise has its place in society. If we never compromised, if nobody ever compromised, we never would get anywhere. No one would ever get married. No one would ever get together and start a business. No one would ever work for anyone else. And God knows we'd never function with us all going our own separate ways, stepping on each other's toes, and ultimately anarchy would uh, ensue. So compromise has a necessary place uh, in human existence. I will give you that. However, some of the greatest triumphs of society, so the, the idea behind the founding of countries like the United States, was based on an absolute lack of compromise. The pilgrims came to the United States because they were tired of being told they couldn't worship what they wanted to. They were tired of being oppressed in Britain. Tired of taxes, tired of all of these excessive rules. And they didn't bend over and take it in that country. They didn't decide, well, if you'll give us this, we'll give you that. They got on a boat and came to America. Now you can argue whether the United States has been a positive or a negative influence on the world, but you can't argue with the fact that it's powerful. The very fact that both our, our enemies, foreign and domestic, fear us is all the evidence you need that we're powerful. Uh, and again, when we overthrew the British during the Revolutionary War, there was no compromise. In fact, we for years and years and years and years we compromised. They'd raise another tax, and we'd go along with it. They'd raise another tax, and we'd say, "Well, well, okay, we'll pay your tax. We hate it, but we'll pay it because we don't wanna, we don't wanna start a war or anything." Well, eventually we said, "Okay, where's this compromise gotten us? We're being taxed, tariffed, charged, regulated. It's getting to the point where they're putting soldiers in our homes. Enough's enough." Uh, I think there was a quote floating around somewhere along the lines of, "Is, is." Is peace so sweet that it must be purchased uh, with the chains of slavery? We had enough. We kicked them back out of the country. and Which was an impressive enough feat of, in and of itself. Uh, considering that they were sort of the, the biggest empire in the world and we were this brand new little bitty country off in a, a relatively unknown land far across the ocean. And we drove them right back. So much for compromise. Uh, if you look at uh, what precipitated World War II, Hitler was in the process of moving from one country to another, taking over this, taking over that. And uh, the functioning leadership of Britain, who was obviously one of the biggest countries in that area, one of the most powerful uh who was poised to be able to slow or stop Hitler in his tracks, Hitler would say to them, well, I'll, if you just let me take over this country, I, I won't attack you. Fine, they'd let him. And he kept doing that, again and again and again and again. They kept letting him get away with it. They kept putting up with it, compromising with him. Well, we all know how that turned out. Just think, if they had put their foot down in the very beginning, it said, uh, 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 uh. We're not taking any of that crap. And whether it would have come to, to blows between the Germans and the British, that's two countries. It wouldn't have been a world war. Or maybe just the threat of, of force might have simmered Hitler down to leave Germany not much more than a typical failed or failing... Soviet-esque state. 
Obviously, it didn't happen that way. They compromised and comp compromised until it was too late. By that time, Hitler had taken over enough land, enough resources, that obviously Britain was not able to stop him on its own. So, so much for compromise. Obviously, government wouldn't function to a certain extent without compromise. At minimum, the, the two different sides, different viewpoints, have to agree to be in the same room together. Now, there's a compromise. I'll put up with you if you'll put up with me. We'll agree to disagree, but something's got to get done. And that's the biggest problem with compromise in Washington. In case you haven't noticed, Congress is one of the most ineffective, sluggish decision-making bodies anywhere throughout the world. They could take uh, four years just to decide whether the cushions on the in the chamber should be red or maroon. I kid you not, that, that could float around for years and years and years. Something, a decision of that trivial nature. So, if everybody's constantly trying to compromise, is it ever going to go anywhere? No. Obviously, you have, in this case, uh, two different viewpoints. One that we're spending too much, and one if we're, that we're spending too little. If we meet in the middle, what does that mean? We're right on course. Look out your window. Go to the, lo the local unemployment office. Check out the uh, soup kitchens. Does it look like we're on the right track? Does it look like we're cruising along smooth as a, as a, ba uh, you know, we're not. We're stumbling all over the place. Our economy's failing. Economies around the world are failing, for that matter. Uh, and whether you want to blame it on too much or not enough taxes, if you meet in the middle, everything looks peachy. We're not spending too much. We're not spending too little. By God, we must be spending just the right amount. Well, it's really working, friends. Kidding aside, like it or not, we need people to put their fit, feet down. And I'll admit, I even admire people on the opposite side of the aisle, on the opposite side of the ideological spectrum, who have the guts to simply say, against all of their, their fellow representatives or fellow leaders, to say, no, we're not compromising. Screw that. This is what I believe. This is what we've got to do. And I'm going to push it. And I'm going to push it regardless of whether you say I'm pushing too hard. So, without trying to inject too much uh, partisanship into this, the big problem is that we are trying to compromise too much. And essentially, we're getting nothing done. We're spending millions and millions of dollars on a government that's not getting anything done. And it's got to stop. Regardless of whether you prescribe to a liberal or a conservative ideology, me personally, I very much uh, prescribe to a conservative ideology, this do-nothing, compromising type ideology has got to stop. We need to do something radical. We're in difficult times, and we're not going to get out of it by ambling along. We have to make some hard choices. If anything, we have to make some big choices. We can't just solve this with a million little decisions. A million little decisions in a Congress that can't make a decision in a day is going to take us way longer than we can afford. We have to make some big decisions. We have to make them now. And if we're ever going to get them done, we can't be compromising all the way along. There's a place for compromise. There's a time for compromise. And it isn't now.